later, but we're going to go live right now. Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while. It's uh, the last three races of the year, I think, was the last time I was on. This is, uh, my name is Steve Bartall. I'm here with uh, Blue Ridge now. We have a couple guests we'll talk about here in just a little bit, uh, but let's recap the end of the season. First of all, happy holidays to everybody out there. Uh, I think the last time we were with you, we were heading to Texas. Uh, so the playoffs, the NASCAR playoffs, actually is a really neat deal. They come down to four drivers that uh, qualify for the end of the series and uh, for the last race in Homestead. And whoever finishes in the lead actually wins the championship. And just like the past years, the winner ended up of the race ended up to be the champion, which is, is, is pretty neat. It tells you a lot about the caliber of drivers that qualify for the playoffs. But if you go back, the playoffs are, uh, you know, 10 races, 16 drivers. Everybody felt at the beginning the Fab Three were going to be in there. That's Kyle Busch, uh, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Truex. And then the other one would kind of be a wild card, who it would be. Well, the guy that got the hottest during the last three races, or excuse me, last ten races, would have been Joey Logano. So he ended up winning his way in, I think, at Martinsville. So he was the first driver locked in, and then Truex and, and those guys got in. So we went to Homestead uh, just before Thanksgiving with uh, those four, the Fab Three. That, that won all the races this year, and, and uh, the hottest driver, uh, Joey Logano. Race kind of went out without a lot of problems. They, um, they all ran pretty good, uh, but Joey passed Truex with 12 laps to go, I believe, and he won the championship. So we had a new champion. The guy that finished second was last year's champion. They closed down that race team. A lot of changes for next year. He's going over to the 19 that had uh, Soares in it. Uh, Soares is going over to the 41 that had Kurt Busch in it. Kurt Busch is going from the 41 over to the one that had Jamie McMurray in it. Hope you're keeping track at home here. So there's a lot of changes going on, but the biggest change that's happening for next year, and then we'll, we'll get to our guests, is they're going to try to make racing more competitive. They're going to try to make it. The fans say there's not enough passing. There's not enough racing. We love to see the stuff at Daytona Talladega. So they're cutting the horsepower down and building these high downforce cars. So basically what they're trying to do is make pack racing at the mile and a half tracks. They're putting bigger blades on them, they're putting openings in the front, and they're bringing down the horsepower so these cars will run together. They're trying to bring from, you know, you're never going to get 40th to first the same because you don't do that in NFL, you don't do that in baseball, that just doesn't happen. But that, on the miles and less, they'll have the same downforce package, but they'll have more motors. So it's, it should be exciting. We won't see the first one until we get to Atlanta, the second race of the year. And then we'll see it again at California, Vegas. And then we'll see the big motor with the downforce package at Phoenix. So, so next year, we're getting ready to do a lot of this stuff. And, and it's pretty exciting. But enough about last year and next year. Oh, last thing. I was the eye in the sky this year for Michael McDowell in the 34 front row. I will not be next year. I hope to come on here maybe in the next few weeks and announce what I'll be doing next year. Uh, McDowell decided to make a change. They're changing crew chief and engineer and car chief. So why not do the spotter also? I wish them nothing but the best. Uh, had a great time with them. Almost one day, Tony, in July. Uh, wish them nothing but the best. But I had a good time with him the last three out of the four years. So... So with us today, we have a couple guests that entered a goodies, um, what is it, Fast Lap, Fast, fast. Goodies Fast Pain Relief Contest. And um, so with us today, we have Mark and Mike, and uh, Mike is the one that actually won the contest, is that correct? Yes. And if you guys would tell us just first, uh, Mike, how you entered the contest, what you did to win it, and, and, and that type of stuff, and then I'll ask you a couple questions. Uh, it popped up on my Facebook one day, and I... Happened to enter it, and then I forgot about it, and then I saw it again, so I entered it again. I entered it a total of four times, and the last one was the last day. The next day they called me and uh, told me I won, but when they're calling from Minnesota telling me I'm winning uh, Mooresville, <laughs> North Carolina, it kind of made me feel a little odd, but I went along with it, and it worked, and we had just a super great time with Dale Jr. We... Did some goodies, uh, commercials and things that should be running later next year. And, and uh, we had nothing but good things with uh, Junior Motorsports, with Junior, all the crew. It was just a fantastic trip. Well, know? let's go back just a little bit, if you don't mind. I think the best part is, is you, you enter this contest on Facebook and, and you're watching this on Facebook now. And, and 
you know, unfortunately in this world, we have all these scams going on. People trying to get your money, trying to get your bank account. I mean, I think I won $18 million uh, somewhere overseas if I just give them my bank account number. So I'm not quite giving that out yet, but, uh, you know, who knows for sure. But, but going back to that, Mike, so you find out you win, they call you, they tell you this is for real, and then they let you know, hey, we're going to send you the information, I assume, by email, or do yes. they send it by letter? No, by email, because it had to been due right away. It's due right away. So this just happened a couple weeks ago, and he wins a contest for him and one other guest, and you are married, right? Yes. And he is married, and he didn't pick his wife, and <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, I think that's great, by the way. But he didn't pick his wife because she's not a huge race fan, so he said, you know, which one of my buddies is, is, is a big race fan and, and a, a junior fan. And it, it's a contest that Goodies puts on with Junior Motorsports and, and Dale Jr. himself. And they got invited down to shoot some stuff for Goodies and shoot some stuff with Junior, spend the day and have lunch. And he invited his friend Mark. Is that correct? Yeah. And so yes. tell me about you getting the call from, from Mike. You know, he called me the day that the contest ended. I went on to enter it one more time. Because I entered this thing every day for two months. And so when he calls me and he says, hey, I think I won it, I checked real quick to see if it was over. And it was over. And I thought, you know what, Mike, I think you really did win it. And I was like, I was ecstatic that he won it because he was asking me to, to come along with him. And so it was almost like I got to win, too. And like he said, man, it was such a good time. And for me, it was a bucket list. I got to meet my favorite driver, uh, go into his shop. They gave us the VIP tour of the whole facility over there. I met uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s sister was working over there, and she was real cool. So I just loved it. It was a great time, and all the people from Goodies were real nice to us, too. Well, I think that's the really neat thing. You know, not, not only, I, you know, like if you go to my Facebook, there's a story about my dad on there right now. And, and it kind of tells how I got into sport 30 years ago. But I think that's the thing that's really cool about this family-oriented business, that although it goes back to the grassroots and their dad and their grandpa used to race, Kelly and Dale do an amazing job uh, with giving back. You know, yes. they, they know that they, Dale is the number one fan. I mean, he probably would have been voted the most popular driver this year, and he only ran one or two races. I know he ran Richmond, maybe no others. Um, but they give back. And I think what, what they do down there, I mean, he... There's a lot of interviews on YouTube of him after he quit racing and uh, of how much credit he gives Kelly. And, and they do a really good job of bringing young drivers in. So you guys got to experience that firsthand. And had you never been in a race shop or anything like that, you get to see the inside of, of, of what goes on in the sport. You know, this time of year in December, unfortunately in our sport, there is a lot of layoffs. There's a lot of things that happen that the, the sponsors go away or the team shut down, a few Xfinity teams shut down. But Junior Motorsports is up and running. I mean, they're bringing in new drivers this year. I know they won the championship for the second time or third time last year with Reddick, mm -hmm. who is now moving over to Childress RCR Racing. And so for you guys to get to do that, I think that's really cool. And, and I know you're very appreciative of oh, it. Oh, very so, appreciative. So, was, um, uh, so tell us just a little bit about the day. Were you just there for one day or two days? or We were there for a total of three days, but we only met the director, and then we met on Thursday. And then Friday we did the commercial and stuff with Junior. And then it was just, we went to all the different shops after that. We were on our own. So we went to Junior Motorsports. We went by uh, Martin Truex Jr.'s place and uh, Casey Kane racing with Senior. Yeah, right. So right there at Talbert Point where all yeah. those shops are right yeah. in that area. Everybody seems to be right there. Nemechek and was yeah. right next to Hammerhead Studios. and. And so it was really neat to see all that. And they had Justin Allgaier's uh, car in there the day before on Thursday doing a shoot with him. So when we walked in, that was kind of neat. And then it was, so it was a, just an unbelievable experience. You know, it really was. I mean. Well, I, I think that's it. the neat thing. Like you said, you get to go down there, you get to experience it. And now when do they think like the, your commercials, when will they be on? The 28th of January. 28th of January. So here in Hendersonville, we'll have a couple new stars with Dale Jr. and, and the Goodies brand, which uh, I think we've all used Goodies. I told them that uh, a couple years back they gave some samples oh, yes. out at the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Got to make sure we get the plug in, just like typical NASCAR guys and stuff. And yeah. um, But, you know... Um, this winter, uh, this is the biggest thing. Is the guys are preparing the cars. 
the marketing team wants to start getting the marketing stuff ready for next year. They want to be able to to show the pictures, whether it be uh, Al Geyer or whoever they're running, uh, Annette or those guys. They want to get those shoots in of the sponsors and the way the cars are going to look. So they have that all crossed off so they can concentrate on nothing but racing in January. So that's really cool that you guys got to play a role in that. And, and they, they told us some stories here before we got going. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Mike, the winner, he used to work in Hollywood. And he uh, worked on some production stuff and built a lot of sets for a lot of the movies. I uh, worked with Steve McQueen on his last couple of movies, who I told him I was named after. Uh, but tell us just a little bit about that, you will, real quick. And uh, Yeah, I was in the construction doing the sets, and we traveled around. Um, I got in it, the person that got me in it, they had just finished The Deer Hunter. And then we're, they were doing uh, the movie with Steve McQueen, Tom Horn, and they invited me on to come to work because they were having problems. And I went to Arizona, and then I just traveled around for the next year, doing movie sets, you know, and we did, you know, like I said, we did quite a few with the villain and uh, Cisco Kid and, you know, with Tom Horn and uh, the Bad News Bears and the Gambler, did quite a few sets, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, meeting Junior, I think, was more exciting than uh, <laughs> a lot of that. I mean, I met Steve McQueen and, and had a few sips with him and things, and it was fun, but... Going to Junior's and meeting him and watching him as a regular person. And then when I met him, it was the same way. I mean, he didn't put on no airs and he didn't act like he was better or nothing. He was just yeah. such a down-to-earth person that made the trip just worth it. And I've been a big goodies fan for since the early 80s. So to actually win the contest through them was really exciting. And then... Along with that, to meet Junior also. I mean, it couldn't have got any better. So, and then Mark's background, he did some racing. He has a few pictures here. If you just want to show a couple real quick, he used to do some sand racing and buggy and truck racing out in the in the desert. If you just want to talk about that real quick. And Yeah, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, <laughs> I was in off-road racing. Uh, it was my father raced and my brother, and we were always involved in racing. And so... Whenever I stopped racing, I had always been a follower of NASCAR ever since I was 1979, so I had to be about 18 or 19. And Dale Earnhardt Sr. was my driver for many, many years. And I just loved the Intimidator. He was he was really something else. Well, I think that that's the, that's the neat thing. And then he has a couple pictures there that, that they, where his dad's crashing. Uh, yeah. If you can pull one of those up, I said, that, that's really like NASCAR right there. I mean, that looks like a... <laughs> Uh, quite a crash right there but um, you know the, I, I find it uh, great you know we're, we're going to wrap this up but I find this really great that in 1979 you said you become a fan because I was still in high school at the time but but that's when they when CBS televised the first Daytona 500 right. uh, and they had the winter storm all up the east coast and they said that's really what made NASCAR go from more of a local area Carolina's thing to, to a national sport and um so I'm hoping with all the new rules and things like that that we get back to where we can get some more fans. Uh, we got a great sport. We got great families. These drivers do amazing things for charities uh, each year. And, and, and I myself can't thank Blue Ridge now and, and Dean Hensley, who's holding the camera. I think, do you have a couple questions, Dean, before I close this out or anything? Oh, uh, a reader or our viewer has a question. She, it's uh, Angie Bell. She says, do you think the replacement for restrictor plates – uh, will work like NASCAR thinks they will. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's a great question. And here's the thing is, so now these cars are fuel injected, so they run throttle bodies. So the, when they restrict them, they can do it a little bit different than what they used to do. I don't know. I don't know for sure that it will. I know that at the we used it at the All-Star race, and A.J. Allmendinger ran one heck of a race, uh, running the high groove, and they ran pack racing, and, and it made the, the racing a little bit closer. The actual all-star race with your top 5, 10, 15 guys wasn't quite as exciting as the rest. But I think as a pack of 40 cars out there, I think it's going to help. I, I, I applaud NASCAR for trying something. You know, why, why not give the fans what they want? You know, you can't let... I was always taught from Andy Petrie and my dad, you can't let the tail wag the dog. But there's times to listen and there's times to figure it out. So... 
So, Angie, I think, you know, I think it will help. I think the uh, along with the restricted motors, though, is a huge downforce. So these cars are going to be pushing a lot more. They're going to be more like the trucks. And if you watch the truck racing, it's really some of the most competitive racing we have. So let's hope that it does. Uh, that's all I can say about that. Uh, any more questions? I have one. Um, there's not really an off season, is there? I mean, I know it's already, well, already you know, working. <laughs> there isn't for the teams. Uh, December and January, when I used to manage teams, I used to say those were the months I really got paid for. And then you kind of got the other 10 months you just managed what was going on. The teams get to a little bit, you know, all the Fords are switching to Mustangs this year from the Fusion. Uh, the Chevys are, are, you know, everybody's trying to get the max. They, they, get, they all have a new body style, not body style, but with all this downforce. So they're all working on different things. They're trying to find more power, how to get more power out of these restricted motors, that type of stuff. Everybody usually takes off between Christmas and New Year. So my, my belief is most of the teams will be off from like this Friday until the Tuesday after New Year's. And that gives them a little bit of time off. For us guys that just, I do my marketing company with AutoZone and, and Spot, I kind of get the whole month of December and January off. Uh, so that, that's, that's always, that's kind of nice for all those years that I was managing for 20 some years that I was managing. But um, no, the off season is short. I think it's 59 days till the Daytona 500. You check in 11 days before that. So we're somewhere around 47 days before we go to Daytona. That's just right around the corner. Oh, yeah. oh and Angie had another question. And all right. she's asking if a feud will last all the off season like Truex and Logano. Let's hope so. You know, it's, uh, I, I, I love it. I, I, the thing is, is a lot of people say one of the reasons our sport doesn't have uh, some of the excitement that it used to have is now all these guys drive these two million, have these two million dollar buses and they're all in these little family areas next to the track and they're all kind of buddies. But, uh, but yeah, I think the feuds stay there. I, I don't think that they look at trying to wreck each other, hurt each other, or anything like that. But I do think some of the feuds will stay there over the offseason. And each driver has the guy he doesn't like to race. Each guy has the guy he wants to race with and he trusts. And, yeah, I think they will carry over, though. Okay. Awesome. So, listen, thanks again. You know, I know politically I'm probably not supposed to say Merry Christmas, but I'm going to say <laughs> it anyway because I'm a Christian. And uh, happy holidays to everybody out there. Thanks to Blue Ridge Now and the Times News and Dean Sensley for Putting, putting up with my time because, you know, we probably did it about 10 times this year. We were probably scheduled to do it about 16 to 18 times, but I didn't show up or gave him a reason why I couldn't be here. And he missed because of his anniversary, so applaud Dean for that. But uh, <laughs> thanks, and uh, once I have an announcement of what I'm doing next year, I will be at the track, but once I have an announcement, we'll, we'll do it through the Times News, and, uh, and we'll talk to you next year after the Speed Weeks gets going. And I, I want to thank all three of you for coming tonight. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.